Claro. I know it was like the roast of uh, Matt Frost, but like it really was one. Like it was like for me, for me it was about like my closest friends. You know, a month before I graduated, just going together and just saying what's up. So I don't know. It just it just seems like a culmination of just a lot of hard work and a lot of great friendships. One, two, one, two, three, four. I play guitar in a band called Opus Dog. I sing also in a band called Opus Dog. Um, I write songs, and in terms of kind of artistic endeavors, that's my that's my main project. I also play guitar in some other bands. I mean, what I really like to do is to make music and sing songs and put out CDs and go on tour and see other musicians. And so. Yeah, that's kind of the extent of my artistic ambitions, is to keep doing it, and do it better. My name is Mark Conway. I am a junior. I'll be graduating from fifth year. Um, I'm an English and Classics double major. Uh, I live in our house. I'm the president of Armadillo. Well, the Armadillo is basically just a, it's like an underground uh, journal, a student journal featuring um, artwork and writing from students. Uh, we have like a, like a nude centerfold in the center of the issue um, for like anyone who like wants to like I don't know, feel good about their bodies and like have good body positivity. Um, but yeah, it's just basically it's like an alternate, um, it's like an alternate publication on campus. Can you tell me that I bring you down? I'm Mary Lou Wiesner, and um, I'm a senior at Beloit College, and. Um, I do a lot. I'm, I sort of am a promoter for uh, bands that want to tour in Beloit. Um, I work at the castle. I do stuff from like social media and content creation to uh, scrubbing toilets <laughs> and making things happen there, including educational stuff. Um, we have like music classes, I teach some of those. Um, I'm starting up dance classes over the summer. And I have a band, uh, DuPont DuPont. And um, we don't starve on the street, but we get damn close. So. We <laughs> could be together. My name is Joseph Evans, I am a junior, I am majoring in sociology, and I am the founder of uh, Tilted Brand and the co-founder of Mock Brand, or MOC. MOC, it's an acronym for Memes on Close, and um, what we do is we take um, like me internet memes of like celebrities or anything that's just like really popular, and we um, make it into an embroidery, and we then put that on. A polo, well, we started with polo shirts, but now we've branched off to like t-shirts and crewnecks and bucket hats and stuff like that. Within like like two months, we were like it was literally just everywhere, like magazines and like like really big like fashion websites, like uh, like GQ and. Um, Billboard, Buy Magazine, Complex, MTV, uh, just all those, and it was it was like really overwhelming at first because like it was it went from like here to like here in such a in such a fast amount of time, and so yeah, I think that like the most crazy thing is when we did the Drake one, he like he mentioned it in an interview that he did, uh, and that was just like he told the person that he had bought like five of them. And so I was just like, like, people were like calling me like, oh my god, like this is crazy, like, yeah, it just, I mean, it's just like the power of the internet and like the influence that it has over our generation is just 
It is incredible. My name is Grace Smith. I am a senior studio art major at the Lake College. As an artist, um, I have several projects that I work on. I um, The focus of my senior exhibition um, is called Janet, which is a performance piece and sort of alter ego that I've been working on since the summer of 2013. Um, other than that, I have um, a sort of project band with my roommate, uh, Alicia Kurtz, and it's called The Drummy Show. And we describe it as like an episode called Black Mass. I would say it's very satanic. Everything with you is so complicated. My name is Matt Prosser. I'm a senior psychology major. I make music, but I'm also a designer. I'm hoping to develop the designer side of me a little more in the future. You know, it's a rare thing to know what you're good at and to know like what makes your life fulfilling. Like most people don't, some people don't ever answer that question. I feel like I'm lucky to have answered that already. My name is Toby Walters. I'm a senior. I'm a double major in mathematics and dance. Uh, I first started dancing at Beloit College and that's really where I kind of felt like I found my art. I've been involved in a number of choreographic projects. I've choreographed probably over 12 pieces at this point um, for various things, mainly around Beloit. Um, things like December dance workshops, um, senior shows, things like that. Um, this piece that I'm working on right now called Background Noise is a solo that I'll be performing at uh, the Performatica International Dance Festival in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, my name is Smitty. I'm a freshman. About to be a sophomore, uh, 19. My major, possibly thinking of a media studies and music major, and I'm a rapper. Um, I'm Pookie. Um, I'm a freshman. Um, I know I'm minoring in music, but I'm not sure my major right now. I am a rapper. Um, I write music. Very well. turnout that they kind of are looking for. I think the people who want to be there are there and the people who will receive it the most are there constantly, like reliably. Um, it depends on like what the events are. I think the more organized art events is a really good turnout for it. Um, it depends on the event. If it's the right night, people are super supportive and come out to a lot of things but people are generally busy, so sometimes if it's the wrong night, it can look like people aren't being supported, but I think people are just busy. There are a few people on campus that care a lot, and there's an overwhelming majority that doesn't care at all. Um, I mean, they'll go to Sea House, you know. You do end up with shows where people are there just to go to a show, and they're not really there to listen to the music, and it's, you know, it can be frustrating, and it also can be really fun. It's, it's gritty, and it's dirty, and it's real, and it's supposed to be fun, but it's also, there's tension between that and, like, trying to, like, make art, you know? This campus, like, it's weird. It is, like, it's a weird campus, you know, like, as far as coming here for music, you know, like, it's a liberal arts school, you know, so like people are very open, like people are very different here, so like they're very open to different cultures and like me and him, you know, like so it's like... Sometimes it's really hard to get student submissions and we have to like kind of nudge people and like say, you know, send stuff to us. Art, people can get very excited about it um, if other people are excited about it. I mean, you could see that with the P Cultural Fest. Nathan Fritz worked really hard for months to get that organized and put together, um, and he was very into it and very uh, excited about it, and caused a lot of excitement across campus too. Um, I generally, I generally like to think that non-art students enjoy visit, like going to art exhibits. Um, I can't say for sure, but um, <laughs> I think a lot of Beloit, because this is a private liberal arts campus. I think a lot of Beloit is very receptive to the arts. Um, 
I think, that, you know, I think that's the majority. And although, like, you know, it might not be quite their taste, you know, something might not quite be, like, what they want to see. I still think it's important for us to have a variety um, of viewpoints and tastes and genres. And when I first got here, Everyone like was going on and on about how like oh there's not enough campus bands there's not enough campus artists like there were a ton of like musicians and artists but like none of them were getting together and doing anything. Right. Um, but I feel like this year and like kind of starting towards the end of last year like this year it's almost like we've seen like sort of like a kind of a renaissance of like Beloit. Uh, art and music and things like that, like there's people just popping up everywhere. People definitely could still do a better job of getting out of their rooms. People, people are comfortable on campus, it's not that they're apathetic, it's just that they have all of their needs met and there's no reason to go get anything else. Like, you can eat and sleep and like do everything you need to do in this little boxed area of yours and you take the same class, or you take take the same path to classes every morning, and you return, and then every Friday night, everyone goes out, and I mean, there's a bunch of different habits, but I'm gonna just go ahead and say one that I, my personal favorite, you know, play golf with some kind of organization. Oh, I can't go to your show. I'm playing golf. I am have. I'm sorry. I have to just get so insanely drunk, because that's way more important than going to see an artistic event on campus. Yeah, definitely. Because I'm committed to these people, and they care about me, so they're gonna make me throw up. So, there's that one sort of area. But they're not gonna go to artistic events because they're set in their ways. The people who go are, you know, the people who are probably crying themselves to sleep at night and need something to do in order to change their lives. Or the people who are like movers and shakers and can and just really care about the arts. This is a public service announcement to the middle aged top one percent. Uh Grace Smith. Um I don't know. <laughs> Chris Bremner. I think there's a lot of uh the dance program, I think, is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. My own band, Car Fogarty. Uh, the Cross. Mainly because that P's right there. Uh, Grace Smith. You know, I transferred here sophomore year. Um, <laughs> from University of Colorado and it was tough because when I first got here I kind of knew what I wanted this to be I knew like what I wanted to be here um, I knew what my what I wanted my role to be on campus here but like I don't think I've been able to see the fruits of that labor until like this semester honestly my last semester here Honestly, and this is going to sound really like simple, but making it the thing. Um, <laughs> like making it like every night or every weekend night, there's a thing. And like everyone like talks about it. Oh, like what's going on tonight? Oh, you're going to this, going to this. And then it just creates like a snowball effect. And that's really tough to do. Um, but I don't know, one way to do it is just to like, you know, explode the entire market with like all the information. Being careful and like working hard, uh, not overdoing it, making sure that like when I do something publicly, put on an event, play a show, it's done right. The best form of advertisement is definitely word of mouth. And so I do try to tell people about what's going on and communicate like in person. But mostly like word of mouth, flyers, posters, Facebook as the main mode of advertising.
I mean, and the other guy too, like we both have a ton of experience in like merchandise and clothing. And so, I mean, when we, when the idea was presented to me, I knew like right away, like, okay, we got to get a shop up. We got to find out who's going to make this stuff and you know, how fast they can do it. And so I feel like, all right, before we had gotten into it, we both had a, a lot of experience with it. I would post it on like Twitter and Instagram. Like that's the, that's kind of like the first step I took because on my Instagram, I have like, I mean, on the tilted Instagram, I have like 26,000 followers. So I, I posted up like the first picture on that and I said, who would buy this? And it like, that picture got the most likes I've ever gotten on Instagram. Once we did that, um, I, I've just built connections with uh, people like that have, were able to help it get it out more. You know what I, mean? I would like to give a shout out to Brian Morello, who has been like a mentor to me for like the past three years. He's been so helpful with me. I mean, to me, as far as business and, you know, he's just been a, a great mentor to me. I, I took his class my freshman year, uh, his entrepreneurship class, and he's the one that really like helped me um, kind of decide, okay, I'm actually going to do this, like clothing. Like when I first started Tilted, because like, it hadn't, I mean, it had started, but I hadn't really like, like I hadn't gotten like a shop up or, you know, done any advertising for it. So he's the one that kind of pushed me to take it further. Um, well, usually when we distribute it, we just kind of leave it on the tables in Java Joint or um, outside yeah. the Mail Center. We also like, we'll give copies to um, like friends of ours. If we're like in the library printing things off and I see a friend of mine at the table, I'll like give it to them and then like encourage them to share that with other people and not just like to throw it out in the recycling. Cause we really only make um, on average like 80 to 100 issues, which is not that much. So um, we really rely on uh, leaving it in spaces, public spaces such as Java Joint uh, for people to look at. To be honest, I think it's just being, just being cool people. Yeah, we've been just like yeah. talking with, uh, making friends with people outside our group, you know, outside of freshmen. Like, for the most part, people like us, and so people kind of like our music, you know. And um, we don't, I don't know, I don't, like, we don't, we don't embrace people, like, we don't step come to people as rappers looking, like, listen to my music. You know, we, we, for the, I think at the end of the day, we look for friendships first and people. And uh, kind of once you kind of establish that friendship with people, you know, then your music just gets embraced. And I think that's, that's for first for us. And uh, also, doing shows, we did like, I think we did a show last semester. Yeah, we did about a total of about maybe three or four shows now. Yeah. We're like adequate sized fish in a like fairly small pond. Um, you know, like we, everybody in the band has like a sizable amount of friends and like we, we basically just try and get the word out. Finding a gimmick is a really good way to get people to come to your shows. Um, it's difficult here because, you know, there's not that many places we can play and there's less places we can play where Beloit students will come and actually come to the show. Getting people to come to shows is a very inexact science, I guess. Especially if you're a band, like, that really wants to play a lot. You know, we have a show tomorrow that I'm super excited about because we haven't played in like a couple weeks and, you know, I would love to play a show every night for like ever but I can't here I have to you know put the guitar in the van and then play a show every night forever for me I've always felt a compulsion to create to like an output as like an outlet I guess I think I just want to challenge the audience um, about their perceptions of <clears throat> experience and ex experiencing art. It's like a deep emotional uh, and aesthetic desire for me uh, and compulsion. I've never considered not doing it, you know, I've never considered not like I don't think I've ever written a song that I've like not shown to at least you know a couple of people. Writing songs and performing them is something I've done for a long time, and I've done it more and more as I've been able to. One of like the key turning points for me was my uh, my band in high school, at Evening with Your Mother, had this song called Trees, and um, or we still do, we still play it when we play. But um, that was the first time we played a album release show in on November eighteenth, two thousand eleven, in this place in Champaign called Indigo Arts Co-op. 
and we did it like completely acoustic and there were like 60 people 60 70 people around here and then they were like singing the song back at us and i'm like it was 2011 it's 2014 now right so i'm like 17 and there's like all of these people singing our song at us and it's you know it's super super cool and i mean i guess you know deciding that this is what i want to do with my life is kind of a like an easy question because i love doing it and there's like nothing else that i've ever done that's made me as happy as you know playing guitar and singing songs and writing songs and having it you know do something in a room full of people I just felt like I had something worth offering that, um, and I don't want that to sound like conceited or in any way. I just felt like I would like, like something different needed to be brought to the table, and like I kind of had that solution. It's something that comes from a deep place of like creativity, and like when other people are able to experience that creativity uh, the way that you intended it. It's the most amazing thing ever. I think part of it comes from kind of the practical idea of making your money doing what you love. You know what I mean? I think that's a lot of it. Because um, ideally, if you know, if I could dance all day and make my money that way, that's what I would do. But that you do, can't make any money dancing, so I am getting jobs and hopefully doing dance stuff as well. Art. Um allows people from different backgrounds to interact with each other. I think it plays the role of bringing people together in a setting where you don't have to know anyone in the room, but you can have something to talk about, um, something to connect to, on or hate, or absolutely hate. Oh, I hated that artist, you know? That also works, but it brings people together um, more than these stupid games of golf and, like, the formals. I'm gonna play more guitar. This summer I'm gonna do, um, we're gonna put out our record and then go on an East Coast tour and then my buddy Nathan and I are going south and then west and then up the coast and through the Pacific Northwest. Um, I mean, I basically just want to do that more after I graduate because you know, I'm a like creative writing, lit studies, you know, history student because I think it makes me better at writing songs. Like I don't really have a a plan B, as it were. So, you know, I've put a lot of time into playing guitar and writing songs and playing them for people, and I might as well keep doing that because it's like the coolest thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, probably. Try and get like a job somewhere, uh, maybe go to move to a small city like Madison, um, maybe try some just like freelance work. I don't know, I would like to do something with writing or publication probably. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Um, unless, you know, something else happens, I plan to pursue um, both of the clothing brands after college. I'm going to take a summer block course. So I'm going to take screen printing for three weeks and um, and then my friend is going to kidnap me and I'm going to go on tour <laughs> with him to the west coast. So I'll be tour intern, I'm going to be a tour intern, I'm going to make it into an internship, hopefully get credit for it. I, I think I'm moving to Chicago. I mean, I'm, you know, it's the kind of the thing that every senior is talking about right now. It's like, I don't really have my shit together, I don't really know what I'm doing. But it looks like I'm moving to Chicago. I have a, a job offer there, um, just like a day camp job while I look for three other jobs um, in order to pay rent and then start going to auditions and start submitting choreography to festivals in Chicago. Hopefully to do some light and design work in Chicago as well. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. You have to ask Bryce to pursue it before college, you know? Um, my goals, if I have to stay in college, I say that because you never know career could take off. But do more shows, get more exposure, have more videos. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm gonna do, you know. And it's like that's that's where it's getting tough because I was just 
back home this weekend and like everyone's like, so what are you doing um, in May? And I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing this, you know, I'm gonna keep doing what I do. The tough question is uh, how to be successful with it. So, we'll see. We got big. Take advantage of the resources here because there's like way more than you would think. Like anything you need, you know, if you need to record, if you need a place to perform, if you need art supplies, if you just kind of have to reach out and go out there and uh, they're not hard to find. These niggas is not gonna get it, you feel me? <laughs> and it's like, you know, like, these niggas, they not gonna get it. Because they not they not gonna truly try to understand. Me coming from Chicago or in the city, and like, you know, so much violence, so much going on in the city, like we see what the music has done and we just wanna take a switch on that, you know, make the music positive, you know. People don't have a, a good perspective about life anymore. Especially growing up in Chicago, people just master somewhere else. Like, I wanna be a rapper. And a lot of people will tell me, well, you might not make a lot of money in that career. Damn them. You know, uh, I want to be the best. You know, I want to be the best. And, and with being the best, the money and all that other thing, all the other stuff will come. So I want to be able to create that next song that either gets somebody through that, uh, through a tough time. Or I want to create that next song that comes on the party and everyone says, this is my jam. And they, you know, and they dance into it. Or that next song that make people just, just think about their they life period or whatever like that, whatever it is. But also not, not being ignorant on the mic. Because I like, like he was just alluding to. A lot of the art that's out there now, a lot of rappers out there now, it's just, it's real ignorant, you know, it's just real stupid, I would say. And pe people are afraid to really push the limits, people are afraid to really be different, people are afraid to be themselves, you know, and I believe that when individuality is seen on the screen, that others who are watching it will in fact follow it, you know. And I think at the end of the day too, even if, like, what is our person, even if nobody, you know, embraces us, or even if, even if they, because some people kind of shine us out, like, don't talk to us, and won't, won't say hi, we still got each other's back. You know, at the end of the day, we came together, we're going to leave together. I'm supposed to part on the rest of y'all, there are pieces that greatness, better yet, that excellence, love sick, but excellence. To the head feels good And I think to myself That I probably should Do this the rest of my life Through all the strife And the crises, the critics, the shitheads I wish that I could do this forever I'm fed up and anxious I'm genius and clever Well, it's true that I can never say never Doesn't matter As long as I get there We got big